sulle auto i motori vengono definiti in fase di progettazione e noi possiamo scegliere se benzina In cars the engines are defined at the same design stage and you can choose between petrol, diesel, GPS, methane or electric. But the power is almost always decided by the producer. With a boat that has an outboard engine though, you can choose from a whole host of engine makers and engine power. So how do you choose the best model? Well, I would opt for the technology. And with this engine, once again, Suzuki have kept their philosophy of generating torque and power with big cubature and the most simple and trustworthy way. This is the largest cylindered 175 horsepower engine on the market, the 2867 cubic centimeters. All this is compact and light too. It's about 215 kilos. The cylinder block has four inline cylinders with four valves per cylinder plus a double overhead cam head. And it also comes in a 150 horsepower version. The 150 and 175 use the same technology that the 200 and 300 horsepower models. On outboard engines, when you put them into gear, the propeller goes from nothing to 200 to 300 revs a minute, which makes the boat hiccup across the whole propulsion system, but Suzuki have found a solution. The system is based on an electronically controlled throttle valve that regulates the combustion flow, i.e. the oxygen. As soon as you touch the lever, the torque decreases, so the rev count and torque become more manageable. It's easy to control because there are no wires to move. It's a drive-by wire, which means that the information is sent to the engine via an electric cable, which is also a very safe way to control. It's a dual system control that has two power meters with the throttle and an electronic control board that double checks all the information it receives before accelerating. A while ago, I tried out the previous version of this 175 horsepower engine and was amazed by how much push it had. I hope that the look of these nice electronic commands doesn't mean it's lost any of its aggressiveness. Not at all. I can almost do a wheelie. Just brilliant, and the reason is that this engine has the variable VVT valve timing, which was developed for the 300 horsepower model, the thing that boosts torque at lower revs. The phase shifter changes the opening times of the intake valves to allow the combustion chambers to fill up efficiently, which means for the best operating levels at all speeds. The system is controlled hydraulically, so no maintenance is necessary for the engine's lifetime. Want to know what the perfect engine is? Which one has the muscle but consumes little? It's true that it's difficult to find both these characteristics in either petrol or diesel engines, but Suzuki have managed it. For example, if I set a constant cruising speed, not touching the accelerator, so I don't need power or torque, the switchboard recognizes it and decreases petrol. Using the mapping that was created exactly for that reason. The speed hasn't changed, but consumption has decreased. Suzuki calls this system lean burn. The system works thanks to the sequential multi-point injection. The switchboard regulates the full range of data received from lots of sensors, which inject each one of the four cylinders with just the right amount of fuel. And now for some data. At 3,900 revs per minute, consumption is 20 litres an hour. The speed is 20 knots, easy, a mile a litre. But Ranieri International's SR21 is a boat that needs a little trim if it wants to truly show off what it can do. At 4,800 revs a minute, cruising speed, 
We are up to 28 knots and we are using 28 litres an hour, so we are still at a mile per litre. Any petrol engine works on a stechiometric average of 14.7 to 1, and a combustion system may vary up to, let's say, 18 to 1. That means 18 pairs air to one part of petrol. It may seem strange, but lots of air makes the engine more efficient, because oxygen is a fundamental element of the combustion process. There are two collectors for every cylinder in the intake system of this engine. When it's going slowly, the air enters the engine by way of a longer and more curved intake tube, whilst when it's going fast, it uses direct and short conductors to increase speed and airflow. All the most powerful engines in the Suzuki series have a transmission shaft offset in respect to the engine shaft. Like this, the block is in a more forward position in comparison to other outboards, which is a positive influence on the stability of the boat, because the centre of gravity of the engine is closer to that of the boat. The voltage regulator can oversee charging of two separate batteries. For example, one could be the starter and one for the water cooling, for example. The fuses are all in one easily reachable box. Two connectors allow quick and fast rinsing after the engine has been used. The system reduces the accumulation of salt and sand, but can only be used when the engine is off. A larger air intake allows maximum inlet flow in order to increase the power and torque values when going slowly. So Suzuki has chosen to continue to invest in the construction of ever better engines. But before we close the test, one more thing to try. How fast it goes. These sea conditions aren't ideal, but we've got to try it out. Six thousand two hundred and fifty revs a minute and forty knots.